what you're looking at is a map of the Eric Nautical HF radio, and it's specifically it's the MWARA system, which is the major world air radio areas which are used for communications with commercial aircraft as they fly away from land and therefore their VHF radios just don't communicate anymore because they're made for a short distance and so they switch over to HF frequencies and this is a nice little map let me get my camera page out of the way and this shows you the areas that are designated and the frequencies that are used in those areas. And what you may be hearing in background from my radio, my Grundig 750 with my G5 RV antenna, even though it's really cloudy today, I just I saw a video about listening to this, which is one of the things I listen to, and so I thought, well, let me just see if I can hear it. And I turned it on about a half hour ago, and the signals were really strong. Don't know why, maybe something to do with these weather conditions, but the signals were really strong. And so I thought I would... Um, capture a little bit of this and tell you a little bit about it. So you can zoom in on this map and you, I found this map by doing a search on MWARA and it's just one of the many many maps that are available out there and there are other maps which zoom in on a specific area. This one you can zoom in a little bit but not very far so I'm going to zoom in. So here's the area that I'm interested in, <coughs> excuse me, which is, uh, well, there's actually a couple areas I'm interested in because I, I'll tell you another reason I'm interested in this is because it gives me another indication of reception conditions on HF. So I could pick like one of these frequencies up here that's over in um, that the controller, you know, where it's from an airport or wherever, um, a ground source, I'll call it, is operating so that if I'm receiving stuff from that ground station, <coughs> it gives me an idea that I can receive other shortwave broadcast from that area. Like I say, it's just another indication. So the area that I could have I can of course receive the best is down in this area. They call it this the Caribbean sector. And uh, here it lists all the frequencies that are used and in some of the frequencies that are most commonly used. Of course this changes. I think this map is like a 2002 map. So things change a little bit. And I'm listening right now, I'm listening to 8.918. Now, keep in mind that these are broadcast in single sideband mode. And the reason they do that is because in single sideband mode, you can get better distance on your reception and your transmission. So if you don't have a single sideband receiver, you can't listen in on this activity. So like I say, I'm listening in right now, and let me move the camera. Let me bring my camera page up so I can see where it's pointing. Okay, we're going to move the camera around. And there's my radio. And you can see that it's crooked. <laughs> there we go. And it's tuned to <clears throat> 8.918 megahertz single sideband, upper sideband, that's that's where they're at, upper sideband. And uh, you can find, you can go do a search on that MWARA and find a listing 
of the frequencies are used, but these maps like this one, and there's other maps um, on the internet, will tell you what the frequencies that are used in, in what area, because different frequencies are used in different areas of the world. So let me turn this back up. I think they've... What I'm hearing is... What am I hearing is... Nothing right now. But anyway, what I was hearing is the controller out of New York in the United States. That's what I was hearing. Plus, you hear both sides. You hear the transmissions from the um, airplane. And the pilots or co-pilots. And of course, when I wanted to show you an example, they quit talking. But this is just one of many frequencies you can uh, listen to. Matter of fact, here's a clip I took out of that book I just reviewed. There's a listing of some of the frequencies. This is not all of them by any means. And, and then it gives you the general area that it covers, like I'm listening right here to 8.918, and that says it covers Caribbean flights and Middle Eastern flights, of, meaning Middle Eastern of the United States. So that's what I'm listening to right now and hearing exactly nothing. Oh, oh God. Why does it do this to me? Anyway, so much for an example. Hopefully you heard it when I first started this recording but it's quiet right now I was I was surprised that uh, about a half hour ago well I actually tuned this in about an hour ago and I could bear I could hear the controller and the and whatever pilot she was talking to very very weak and then within about a half an hour the signal became very strong and now it's died down. I don't think that they're transmitting right now. Maybe they are, and I'm just not hearing it whatsoever. This is very disappointing. Okay, so you can hear. So you could hear the um, the pilot very strong. Of course, he has the advantage that he's up in the air, so it makes for a very uh, high antenna. Uh, you could barely hear the operator in New York, but um, like I say, conditions change, and, and you, sometimes you can hear her just as strong as the pilot. You can also, um, if you want to see visually where the aircraft is, they, they normally on their transmissions tell you their flight number and like he said JetBlue was the airlines and then there's another web page that actually sh can show you on a map where airplanes are again what I use this for is it gives me an indication of reception conditions so if I'm receiving aircraft that are say over Europe then I know I should be able to receive international broadcast from Europe. It's just an indication. It's not a 100% guarantee. So I just thought I'd show you that today. It's um, it's one of the things that I like to do to, to be just do something different is to listen to those. Of course, there's um, let me see if I've got it here. Okay, here, which you probably can't see very well. Because the lighting is not too good. Is again, this came from that book I reviewed, the Shortwave Listener's Guide. Is this another table? And this is frequencies, HF frequencies that the military uses. 
And for instance, one that's really popular, which is interesting because I don't even see it on the list. But anyway, it's 11175, 11.175 megahertz. I don't even see that listed. That's strange. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Nope, I don't see it. And then there's um, another table for um, this is the table for marine radio broadcast on HF. Again, it's single sideband. That's you know, that's the advantage of single sideband. You don't necessarily just use it for listening to amateur radio. You can also listen it to these things, such as the marine frequencies. And this is kind of an interesting to listen to when there are storms, you know, either in the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic or wherever. You might be able to pick up some, some distress signals from a ship that's having some problems. But anyway, and I'll, I'll do a video on that. Uh, this is, this band, the marine band HF, is, is active, but it's not real active unless you got bad weather conditions. And then it becomes really active sometimes. So anyway, that's the show. I just thought I'd show you that. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. It makes a, a big deal about the thumbs up, you know, it tells me. I had to pause for a little commercial announcement from my weather station. But a thumbs up tells me that I've done a video that is of interest. And a thumbs down, which you can do, tells me I've, you know, wasted your time and you know, if I get too many thumbs down, I'm like, I'll never do another video of that subject. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.